Hi. Welcome to the bathtub. When you hear that iconic music and see this iconic puppy, you know you're in for another episode of Puppy Noir, the only hard-hitting, gal-loving, gat-firing, crime-riddled book talk show on the interweb that won't let you listen to the good music because our puppy is busy drinking her trick-or-treat bourbon. And uh, we're going to get rid of her because I've filmed this like two or three times now. And she's, she's, she's exhausted. You can see how she gets so excited when she does this stupid thing. But uh, i got to get rid of her now because she's been running around like a mad, mad dog. Go ahead. There you go. And can you see it? No, you can't see it from here. I'm going to show you BK Smith. There's, there's Vito Corleone. A lot of people don't know Vito Corleone. But he uh, he actually spent a lot of time in the bathtub reading books. That's true. Um, this week we're going to do a very brief episode of Puppy Noir on one of my favorite crime writers and detective writers, Ross MacDonald, the Lou Archer series. I've been reading these since I was 15. And whenever the world is really depressing, as it's been in the past few weeks, I've, uh, I have often read detective fiction. It's 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 not totally escapist. There's something about the the, the the sadnesses and the tragedies of all these kind of screwed up families that, that Lou Archer meets in the course of an investigation that uh, feels part like you're part of the world. And at the same time, they're so they're so tightly organized, unlike our real lives, that they, they give you a, a sense of uh, a sense of order. I guess that's it. Anyway, this is the All Dementia edition. Um, I wanted to say a couple words about um, my my. My reading experiences over the over the decades is that you know I have a lot of books, and you know I'm always trying to you know I would like to read them all, but I never will. Um, one of the, by the way, one of the stupidest things you could ever say when you go into someone's house and they have a lot of books, never say have you read all these books, because you look like an idiot when you say that. I never I still don't understand why people say that. I have not read all these books. I've read a lot of these books. I don't even remember which books I've read, and that's sort of what I'm getting at here is that uh, over the decades there's often I'll see a book on the shelf and maybe it always kind of sticks out to me and I often say oh I should really read that biography of Hegel or I should I really want to read that uh, The Magic Mountain by Thomas Mann and one of these days I'm going to read it and over the over the years I'll sit around say, thinking that and then eventually I'll say okay I'm finally going to read that Hegel biography and I'll take it out and I'll open it and it'll be filled with notations that I made underlinings from when I read the book 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I don't even remember the damn book at all. I don't remember anything. I don't even remember the experience of reading it. But I know I read it because I have notes in it. Well, the past four or five years, we've only been doing the bathtub talks for three years, maybe, three and a half years. Floral pattern. Always, when you're reading Puppy Noir, you should have a floral pattern uh, martini glass. Preferably, preferably with a martini in it. Um, over the past three or four years... I've now twice, in giving these talks, found myself rereading books I had just read like six months ago or a year ago. I did that with May Gray. May Gray, that's sort of understandable because there, there's so many of them and they're all sort of similar. And I started reading this this week because so I was really kind of depressed by the world. And I got totally into it and I love, I love the Lou Archer series. Uh, and uh, I was about 20, 30 pages into it and I kept thinking, oh, I... I vaguely remember this. Oh, yeah, the kid gets kidnapped. Oh, yeah, the parents are suspicious. And, oh, yeah, someone's adopted, but maybe it's a real... And I realized I just read this book probably six months or a year ago. I'm afraid to go through my talks because maybe I actually did a talk on it, but I don't know. It doesn't really matter anyway because you can actually reread these books over and over again. The great part of the Lou Archer books is they're very different. We've talked a bit about them from the Chandler-type uh, fiction where you have this kind of really, really clever, beautifully written prose. And, um, they're very kind of, they're tidy, uh, introspective, observational books. So the prose is very smart, but it doesn't call attention to itself. And they're mainly scenes of dialogue. And Lou is a very funny kind of character. He's got a very distant look at the people he, he, he works for. Um, but he almost always has to do with meeting people learning about their past and how the past kind of ties up into their future, their, their present their present problems. So most of the novels start off with a, a crime. In this case, it's a, a young boy who's, whose parents have put him in a, a, 
basically it's almost an institution for, for troubled teens. And he runs away and then he gets kidnapped and the kidnappers are asking for money. And it looks very quickly like the kid may be involved with the kidnappers and working with them. So Lou goes in and meets these people. Lou Archer's the detective. And he starts to make the connections between all these different families and neighbors and their histories going back 15 or 20 years. This is a really good one. I think it won an award. Um, the Far Side of the Dollar, they're these very kind of subtle titles. And I can't remember the line. There's a great line in the book about um, what's waiting for us all on the far side of the last dollar. You know, it's, uh, it's just that people live their lives making money, and then at the end, what's, what's, what are you gonna, what are you, where are you going to end up at the end? Um, I want to just read two or three passages. I really enjoyed reading this again. I did read it like six months ago or a year ago. Um, and I wanted to read two passages. Oh, do I have? Did I, say, I did save them. And they're kind of, give, they're, they're kind of connected in a way. And Lou says at one point, he's interviewing people, um, and he said, uh, some, the, the, wife, the wife of the, the guys hired him says, uh, you're right again, Mr. Archer. My husband had just heard from the lieutenant. How can, you, how can you possibly know so much about the details of other people's lives? So she's, he's coming in, and he's found out all this stuff that she didn't know he knew. And he says, other people's lives are my business, and your passion, and my passion. And my obsession, too, I guess. I've never been able to see much in the world besides the people in it. I really love that line. I mean, it's an interesting way of looking at the world and uh, the idea that, uh, you know, he doesn't think about history or anything. It's just the individuals and how they live. And later on, he's talking to another woman in it. I think this is the woman who's an old, an old girlfriend of his. Um, and they're talking about the connections. And he says... Uh, the woman says to Lou, that's your mission in life, isn't it? You're not interested in people. You're only interested in the connections between them, like a, a plumber. I laughed. There's another connection we have to go into, I said. This one involves a telephone. Now, the idea that he's sort of, he, he establishes all these connections, but he has all these different people who seem to have no connections with one another, which is um, sort of this perfect you know, analog for exploring California. Because California, you do not feel like people know each other. You don't feel like there's these long dynasties or historical dynasties. You feel like everyone's coming and going from different places. And Lou's whole gift is to go in and find the connections between these people. Um, I, I would say that the late... I, I used to believe that the late Ross MacDonald books were the best. And they are really good. But I'm reading my way backwards. So I'm reading, as I've done with some writers, I'm reading back to the earliest books... I'm skipping over books like The Chill, which I've read three or four times, and trying to read the ones that I haven't read before. And I found pretty much that all the way back, they're all good books. So you can pretty much start anywhere. I would say the middle, the middle period and early period of Lou Archer are a lot more spare, a lot leaner books, whereas the later ones are a lot more reflective, a lot more melancholy, and were a lot more into Lou Archer's head. He's a little more observational in these books. He hardly ever does anything. He hardly does much. He just looks around and finds out who, who did what to who. Okay, so if you're really feeling as depressed as I've been lately, go read this for the second time. It doesn't matter. You read it for the first time. Read it for the third time. Uh, I, I've, I may have read it three times. I think I read it once years and years ago. And it's still all, it still holds together, and it's still a pleasure. Okay, take care. Don't go outside unless you're going to the Trump rally. Take off all your masks. You can go, you can go naked to the Trump rally. It's okay. Take off all your masks. Go straight to the Trump rally. Ride your hog in there and, and have a great time. And everybody else, stay in the bathtub. Read your books. All right? This, that's from the Master Bather. The Master Bather told you to do that.